You see, these things they are basically livestock. They have life in them. And at some point, from dogs you stay to an environment, you get to have them sick. Some might even die in the process. But nevertheless, you just, you know, keep up the good work. If you lost the pot, that doesn't mean you should probably stop there. Sometimes these dogs will go sick, you spend a lot of money to keep them. In fact, at some point, your dog will be sick, you get diseases that you've never had in your life before, and you feel like, ah, how can a dog contact this? But you know, it's all about the passion you have, so you just have to you know, take care for any dog at any point in time. Yeah, my name is Joel Damilari, um, the, the CEO of Pet Magic Canals, besides the Pet Magic NG. Yeah, so we basically breed dogs, we import and we export dogs. We, we import dogs from countries like Russia, Ukraine. Come here, hey, come here. We import dogs from countries like Russia, Ukraine, Poland, South Africa, and you know, other countries that have good dogs. And we sell also within Nigeria. I've been in this business for about eight years. I've been in this business for about eight years, you know. It's a very profitable business, it's a very lucrative business, you know. And it's not it's not it's not more like it was a business in the first instance, because first of all, if you don't have passion for pets, I don't think it's something doable or workable. You don't have passion for pets. So it all grew from the passion aspect, you know. I I was really a dog lover at some point, but you know, along the line, things tend to you know, change and people tend to want to get dogs from you for the fact that you love dogs and they tend to see you with very good, pure dogs. So, before I knew, boom, it became a business. And now we sell dogs on the daily, like, on the daily we sell dogs. Yeah, uh, well, for the challenges, huh? you know, like I said, <clears throat> It's a passion, fun business. So first of all, we see challenges as a, a learning process. If I'm going to start listing the challenges we, we usually face in such businesses, it's quite a lot, but I'll start from somewhere. You see, these things, they are basically livestock. They have life in them. And at some point, from dogs you fail to an environment, you get to have them sick. Some might even die in the process, but nevertheless, you just, you know, keep up the good work. If you lost the puppy, that doesn't mean you should probably stop there. Sometimes this dog will go sick, you spend a lot of money to keep them. In fact, at some point, your dog will be sick, you get diseases that you've not had in your life before, and you feel like, ah, how can a dog contact this? But you know, it's all about the passion we have, so you just have to you know, cater for any dog at any point in time. And even for the sales, at times, you know, you, you go to deliver and you might have challenges with clients telling you, ah, the dog, uh, <laughs> the dog you brought is way smaller than what they say in the picture. It's a very big challenge for us, man. So, but over the time, we, we try to, you know, um, work on making what we sell, what we deliver exactly. You will try to express it well in the pictures you post out there before delivering the pets. What even happened first was, you know, um, I had to save to buy, hey, come here. I had to save to buy my first dog. Then I started with just one dog, just one dog, you know, and along the line, you know, having these pets around, they, they tend to be your companion. Then I got another one, I had two. When I bought two, I lost the first one, you know. Then we don't have much of experience in about when you do the seat, how to treat it, how to, you know, go about all of that. So when that one died, I didn't give up. I didn't give up. I had to buy two more. I had to save up to buy two more. And at some point, I had three. So having those three, I, 
I kept them, I started breeding them. And it was not like I started marketing them. But you know, it's just a normal thing when I walk my dogs on the street and you know, people tend to see how lovely they are and ask me, wow, I like this, would you, would you be having any puppies soon? We'd like to get. That was how the business started. You know, when my dog started giving birth, I started meeting out to people that I've met while working my dog. And I started buying. And at some point, you know, when they buy, there's money and you tend to buy more, you tend to enlarge. At that point, I started seeing it as a business. So before you know it now, we, we really evolved from where we started from. Because you know, the, when we started, we started with pet dogs quickly. Dogs like Lassa Absol and American Eskimos. But actually, I still have a Lassa Absol with me because, you know, it's quite the good we started with. So we still have it available as a key to for how we started. And here are Siberian Huskies. This this was usually the import game from Russia. Here is the blue eyed, pure white Siberian Husky. Hey, come here. Here is the blue eyed, pure, pure white Siberian Husky. This is a black and white Siberian Husky, blue eyes as well. So at this point, we import dogs from Russia. At this point, we import dogs from Russia. It's something of fashion, like I said initially. There's where we get their food, the dog, um, the dog crunchy, the dog canned food. They also sell noodles too, but you know, what is what doing is what doing well. So what we try to do is, in as much as the dogs bring the money into the kennel, we try as much as possible to get them the exact dog food. Because that is best for them. For there to be a dog food, that means there's a specific specification put in place for the dogs. Within that premises of the tree that was made for them. So it's just the dog food. Usually give them, we give them the dog, the dog dry food and the dog can food. Uh, about the um, sales, how we market. You know, um, marketing is really wide. It's, it's really, really wide, you know. Marketing is wide in the sense that uh, what you put out there determines the feedback you get. In fact, what you put out there determines if you are even going to get the feedback. So, you know, marketing boils down to the fact that you need to sell clean puppies, you need to staff your puppies in, in a very clean environment. You need to make sure your pup is healthy. You need to make sure your 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 pup is um, okay for the shoot. You want to because in fact some dogs are not even photogenic. So you know, in rabbit as we tend to use the photogenic ones to start um, a marketing you know, a marketing scheme to get clients to come and buy. So, you know, it's more like, you know, a clean dog, a clean environment, nice camera, very, very nice camera to snap. And for instance, where we usually sell our own pops is um, on Instagram, at um, petmagic underscore ng. That's where I'm retired from, retired from scratch, and right now, we are really big on the brand. Right now, we are really big on the brand. So, it's just about um, the strategic um, understanding of taking quality pictures, you know, the very good background, posting it, and people who know the value will surely come for it. So yeah, my name is Blue Damilare, aka Pet Magic. So I make money from selling pets. And then to reach us on um, our social media platform, on Instagram, you can reach us at um, petmagic underscore ng. And you want to reach us on WhatsApp, our WhatsApp line is um, 081 089 31437. I repeat again. 081 089 31437